Thank you for joining us today. I'm Catherine Mason, and we have our usual uh, group with us this morning. We're back live, girls. <laughs> We've got Nita and Joe Montgomery, and uh, Nita's going to bring our message a little bit later. But we've got some things. We've had some. We've had a couple of three weeks off. So we're raring to go, I guess, this morning, aren't we? Nita, especially Nita. She's got some things that she, were ministered to her during the holidays. We both have had, we all three have had some experiences during these three weeks that we've been off. And I want to share a little bit about it with you. And uh, Joe, you had one at first. You wanted to share a couple of things. When we get out on, the, when we get out, and go to the grocery store and go to Walmart just like everybody else. And sometimes with, with less makeup and less dress up, right? Mm -hmm. But people still recognize us and we get a kick out of it. And, and so we come back and we share with each other uh, have, that, that somebody out there is watching and it makes us feel good that, that maybe you're getting ministered to and the Holy Spirit is, is, is here in our, is with us right here in the Amen. studio. We've had people tell us we can sense the Holy Spirit, especially, especially, and Ken right now, Ken we Joe, especially when we get into the Word and get to teaching. And so we want you to feel that. We want you to get a pencil and paper because Dita's got some scriptures she wants you to look up and or write down so you can read later. And uh, uh, we want you to, to be comfortable. Get it. We want you to call in for prayer uh, Tanya, one of our volunteers, is upstairs, and Marilyn's usually up there, <clears throat> and I think Jenny. So we have two or three people up there that can answer your phone calls for prayer. Um, we like to do that, and we have a little box down here that we put all our our uh, prayer requests in. And so I even thought today we just pull them, one next week. Let's just pull them all out, and we'll scatter them all over the table. And they've been coming in there for a year or so. And so we'll just repeat our prayers yes. and, and be blessed to know that lots of those prayers have been answered, okay? But there are needs, always needs out there for you. So give us a call if you need prayer. And uh, uh, Tanya has been bringing somebody with her. So today she brought Miss Gussie Williams with us. So we're glad to have Gussie with us in our studio this morning. If you want to come down and hear and visit with us and, and pray with us after the program's over, we're always here. And call, make sure we're going to be live. But once in a while, we one of us gets sick or something. But we had, and we have to take off. Today, we're all feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a good thing in the Lord. All right. Amen. So, Joe, go ahead and share with us what you you ran into this uh, week. Well, uh, really, it wasn't this week. I think it was just about the week of Christmas when we were off. And you remember, I come by your house and I couldn't, I didn't see nobody. So I. Um, there was a lady in one of the business, the, the Bible bookstore, and uh, she recognized my, my name and she waited on me and she uh, was telling me how much the program blessed her and uh, how that she and her husband both watched uh, all the time. Sometimes they're in trouble, chaos and stuff, different things mm -hmm. happening, yeah. and they hear and then and they're blessed. And uh, she was, really blessed and prayed for me right there in the in the place of business. She took my hands and she prayed for us and Praise that God, God would help us. And I thank God for that. Yes, He, yes. he did that. And uh, But almost every week or so, we run into somebody, all three of us. Nita, you had a couple of things you wanted well, to share. I, I ran into a lady at the store, a young lady, that was telling <laughs> me how much she, the program ministered to her. And then there was a young man at the uh, school where my daughter-in-law uh, teaches. And uh, he said he watched the program all the time. Hallelujah. And uh, he just blessed me because he was, he was just bubbling himself, you know. So we appreciate that. Yes. You, you, yeah. don't, you don't really realize, you know, when we sit down here at this table, we don't see nobody but Jimmy Williams most of the time. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and Cece, yeah. Cece. The, those that come in here that work here. And we don't realize how, who all's out there because everybody don't call in and, and then we don't expect them to. 
But when we see you in the store or we see you wherever we see you, you bless us whenever you tell it. This, the, the program is a blessing to you. And we give all the glory to Amen. God because we're Amen. not nothing. That's right. We don't have nothing. That's right. We don't have no message. No, sir. We don't have no hope. We don't have nothing without Him. That's right. So if He blesses you, then He blesses us first. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And I, I got to tell my tell, yeah. we had often during the week, I'll have, not often, but two or three times a week, we'll get phone calls for prayer other than right than during this program. And especially there'll be one or two that that I've talked to before, prayed with before, and they'll call back. And that's always such a blessing. But this, I know this little lady is listening this morning. She told me she's going to be. And she's called me and she said, are you one of the ladies? And I said, yes. And she said, I said, do you need prayer? And she said, well, no. <laughs> she said, I called to see where you get your hair done. <laughs> and I just cracked up and I said, you, you, are you serious? And she said, yes, because sometimes I think, you know, I don't go have it combed all the time and I kind of floof it up a little bit and I had Cece do it a while ago. And, um, but it, it just, I got such a kick out of that. So I told her where I got my hair done. Maybe it's because it's a little darker than Joe's and Nita's, you oh. think? <laughs> oh, but I do, I just, uh, yeah, well, I have a good it hair. It looks yeah. pretty. And we all, we, we like to look pretty too, don't we girls? That's right. Yeah, we want to look pretty. We put on our bright colors for you. Yeah, and we're not dead yet. No, no, we're, we're, we're not. much, very much That's alive. That's right. And, and we're so glad that you come and join us. Well, one of the things that I've been reading this week, um, Somebody for Christmas, somebody gave me Joyce Meyer's book on Battleground of the Mind. Mm -hmm. And so I really hadn't had much time to read it. If I, I do good to get my Bible know, read, and I that's know. first. And then if I have time, I'll pull it, because there's always a bunch of books and I stuff mean. laying around. Then I will, uh, I'll pick up something. But this morning I had been reading in Galatians, the, some of Paul's writings. And, and I've been doing that all week because I didn't do that all this morning. But um, <clears throat> uh, I got thinking about Joyce Meyer's book was laying there on the table by it. And I picked it up and looked at her index. And some of the things we're talking about, some of the freedom that we have in, in Christ. And that's kind of what she's talking about here, that there's always a constant battleground mm -hmm. going on in our minds. Mm -hmm. That we, it doesn't matter how much of a Christian we are. It doesn't matter how much we stay in the Word. Well, it does matter if you're staying really in the Word, but it's our closeness and our eyes on Jesus that help control this battleground that goes on. And so I'll read a little bit out of there in a minute, but I wanted to, to talk just a minute before I give it to, to Nita um, about what Paul said in Galatians so if you want, if you got your Bible <clears throat> and you want to turn to Galatians, the, mine is, the reason it's so big, Joe, we all have these great big Bibles <laughs> that we tote around, but um, the reason that they are, some of them, is because we have all this study stuff in here. Um, Joe just got our new Bible and, and hers are inserted, her comments are inserted in there. Mine, the scripture is up here at the top and then about a half of the page describes what that scripture was talking about mm -hmm. <clears throat> and how it, uh, and the history behind that <clears throat> excuse me but today and and always at the first of a chapter it explains what was going on in that bible time and it said in galatians uh, is uh, that that book is a charter of christian freedom so and it's only five or four or five chapters long little little scripture uh, pages it's probably not over four pages long mm -hmm. if you take all this other stuff out. So it's not a long thing for you to sit down and look at. Is that a good chapter for, for early Christians to study, Nita? The book of Galatians? Uh -huh. Is it uh, to talk yeah. about freedom in Christ? Right. Sure. Yeah. It's a new okay. Testament. Because we, we, this talks about, it said it's uh, the charter for Christian freedom. It said, Paul proclaims the reality of our liberty in Christ. It says freedom from the law, which is the problem with the Jewish faith, is that they want to do, they want to continue with all the, all the law, the first five books of the, of the Bible. 
and the power of sin and freedom to say it says freedom from the law and the power of sin and freedom to serve our living Lord because he's mm, alive. I mean, he came back. Right. He didn't he I mean he died, but he came back. Yeah. And there's nobody else that can claim that, okay? Most of the converts and early leaders of the church needed this is what we were talking before we came on the air. Uh, were Jewish Christians. Right. I mean, there wasn't a whole sure. lot of Gentiles that they were talking to who, pro who proclaimed Jesus as their Messiah. As, as Jewish Christians, they struggled with a dual identity. Their, Jewish, uh, their Jewishness constrained them to be strict followers of the law. Their newfound faith in Jesus Christ invited them to celebrate a holy liberty. Amen. And they wondered how Gentiles or non-Jews could be part of the kingdom of heaven. You mm -hmm. want to add something to that? Well, whenever they, when he, whenever he teaches them to turn loose of the law and get a hold of Jesus, <clears throat> then they get the freedom that they want. Yeah. You don't have freedom in the law, uh -uh. but in Jesus, they had freedom to, to live for okay. him. Okay, okay. He said the Jewish laws uh, said uh, taught that the, the, the how do you say Judaizers? Judaizers. Judaizers. Judaizers uh, was an extreme Jewish faction within the church, and that's what he was writing this letter uh, the, to, the, to the Galatians, the church there. And he said uh, they believed they were trying to to submit the Jewish laws and traditions in addition to believing in Christ. As a missionary to the Gentiles, Paul had to confront this issue many times, and that's what he's talking about. So that gives you some groundwork as to understand why he's writing this letter in, uh, to this church. And uh, it goes on to say that, um, that he, Paul was trying to bring them back to the pure gospel, which is what you talk about, Nita. The good news is right. for all people. Jews and Gentiles alike. Salvation is by God's grace through faith in Christ Jesus and nothing else. That's that exactly it. right. At the cross. It's the cross in Christ. And that's the whole thing of it. When it gets away from that, it's away from the gospel. Yes. That's so it, the then gospel. it's not pure. No, we it's mix not it up pure with all if you don't stuff. have the uh -huh. gospel in the blood. And the, right. Now, um, Let's see, I wanted to skip over to another, to, to about the fourth or fifth chapter where he's talking because he talks to them in, in that first chapter or two. But um, he's talking about where I've got my, I, I highlight a lot of stuff. It said, and it's also said this, that these brothers, these, these Judea, Judeites, were, a part, were, were likely from the party of the Phyllis, uh, Pharisees. These were the strictest religious leaders of Judaism, some of whom had been converted. We don't know if these were representatives of well-meaning converts or of those trying to convert Christianity. Most converts agree that neither Peter nor James had any part of this conspiracy because conspiracy. in this book he's also addressing Peter for for allowing that to come in. But anyway, um, it in I need to go on over here a little bit further here just a second. Oh here we go. It says I have to find my underline. I don't know whether you mark on your Bible or not. It's not a good Bible if you don't mark on it, right, Joe? I like I like while well, go Joe opened her Bible and I said, Joe, those got marks all over it. It's brand new Bible in it. You do the same thing I do. I go down there. It's all right for you to, to claim your Bible. Do you do that, Nita, in yeah, your Yeah, but this uh, the one at home, I have on this too, but the one at home is wrote all over, marked all over. I mean, yeah, that's your study Bible. Prayed that's, all over. Yeah, yeah. Cried all yes. over. <laughs> it says, what it, then is the purpose of the law? Why did they have the law to begin with? It said, uh, <clears throat> It was added because transgressions, because of transgressions, until the seed, until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. I mean. And the seed was our Lord and Savior. The law was put into effect through angels as a mediator. 
A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, even that, and but that God uh, is one. Amen. But God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? God forbid. It says, absolutely not. Now I'm reading from the scripture, and for those of you that did want to, that's uh, chapter three. Uh, we want to write that down and look at it later. It uh, starts with, chat, with verse 19, and I'm going to read just a little bit here. It said, uh, is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. Uh -huh. But it didn't. No. Um, but the scripture promised that the whole world is a prisoner of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to all those who believe, okay? Before the, this, faith came. In other words, the, the, a long time ago, they had the faith. We were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was, was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Amen. See, now you need to read this and slow down and so you can read it sentence by sentence. What is it? Um, scripture on scripture. Line upon line. line, line, upon line. Precept there you go. Upon precept. <clears throat> precept. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. Said, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all, in other words, I'm trying to give you hope this morning that that Gentiles, that we all are sons of God, that we all are His children. Okay, if we believe, right, Nita? That's right. right. You gotta believe. believe. And then you got to go a step below, above believing too. Okay? Yes. Uh, with Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. If you belong to Christ then you are Adam's seed Abraham. and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed. A did I say, what did I say? Adam. Adam, okay, <laughs> to Abraham's seed. Thank you, Joe. That's okay. And heirs according to the promise that God made to Abraham. Now, what I am saying is that a long, as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Mm -hmm. He's going to inherit that. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, there's a lot of study stuff in here. Mm -hmm. When we are children, we are in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time has fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, Amen. born under law, to freedom, to, no, to redeem those under law we might receive the full rights of a son. And we think of all the, the ones that, uh, that received uh, their inheritance, you know, during the Bible, in the Bible stories. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. Yeah, That's yeah. that Holy Spirit that we talk about all the time. When Jesus left, he, then that Holy Spirit came. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Amen. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And you know that Abba means daddy, yes. God. Yes. And that whenever we uh, receive Jesus Christ, because he died, it was God in Jesus, re re uh, redeeming the world to himself. Yeah. And, uh, the Holy Ghost comes in with the love of God, crying, shedding the love of God all abroad in our souls, in our spirit, crying, Abba, Father, because it's our Father now, just like He is Jesus's, and He loves us just like He loves Jesus. Now, we'll never be Jesus, but I, I will love Him more because right. He adopted us yes. as sons and daughters, and we can now come to him through the cross and the blood. That's the only door. 
There is no other. You can't enter without that. But the Spirit has to bring Him to us and then right. has to take us to Him. Yes. And He cries, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Isn't that precious? That's precious. That means He's my Father. That means everybody out there. Everybody out there that'll call on the name of God, okay. that was He was given for you. That's what's precious. He took it all. He loved us. He loved us so much. And he loved his father so much. You know, in John 3, 16, yes, sir. That, that we just had a book on that, and uh -huh. it said, for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. I know. That he gave. In Ephesians, when it says about that we might know the depth, the length, yes. the height, and the breadth. And in there it said, God's measure of love was the Father. He's the head. Yes. And yet they're one. They're three persons, but they're one yes. in everything. And he said, in, in my Bible, it was explaining the measure of the love of God. And he said, God showed his measure by John 3, 16, yes. where he gave them all he had. He gave his heart. Yes. This is a heart thing. And that, yeah. And that's this is we're... not a knowledge thing. It's a heart thing. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. It. It's a it's a fellowship. Yes. It's joy divine. And and he said God gave his measure when he gave John three sixteen. And Jesus gave his measure when he hung on the cross right. and took all of our sins upon himself. That we might not have to, that we we couldn't pay the debt. No. We owed a debt he, we I could not pay. pay. Yeah. He paid a debt he did not owe. But now he took it on us and the freedom for us is to run That's to that it. cross, yeah. fall down before him, admit we can't save ourselves, but he loves one as much as he does another. It doesn't matter how no. far down they and are. And then it said, the measure of the Holy Ghost love was that he con condescended to l leave heaven, yet he's still there. He's still there, but he's here. He condescended to come to this house, this house, this house, this house where he dwells, and he brought in the love of God. He swooped in with the anointing of the Holy Ghost and poured out the love of God. He shed it abroad all in this temple. Where, we, where he lives to reveal his love for us too. That's how much he loves us, that he, would leave, that he would come to this old vile, filthy world. Now, he doesn't come and live in sinners. He will after you repent. But what the Holy Ghost does, he comes and he convicts and he shows us and convinces us that we are now sinners. And we got to have a sa Savior. So he leads us and always points us to Christ. That's what he does. Yeah. And he takes us because Jesus said, you can't even come to me unless yeah. the Spirit yeah. draws you. Yeah. And you can't go to the, my Father unless you come through the door. And I am the door. And right. I stand at the and door I, yeah. and knock. And, and if knock we knock on his knock. door, he'll open too. Yes. Isn't that precious? That's mm. his measure of love. That's almost, that's why people have trouble accepting it, Joe. It's so simple. It is simple. We make it hard, but all we, we, we got to do is do all our says and we repent. Yeah, that's where that law jumped back in there, didn't it? We think we got to go back there and do those five But first. see, that was a schoolmaster. That was a schoolmaster in there. Yeah. To point us to Christ. That's what the law was. Yeah. It was powerless to do anything. But when, and, and God rendered that so. Because all the law pointed to Christ. Everything in the Old Testament points to the, to the New Testament, points to the cross, points to Jesus. He is the mediator. He is our advocate. He is our friend. And he's a lover of sinners. Yes. That's right. one thing. He loves that sinners. That makes his day. That makes his day when, when he somebody... hears one cry. <clears throat> And he's right there. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is one that nudging them to cry. Yeah. You know, it's so sweet. It's precious. 
Well, we better get to Nita before we, we'll, we'll run out of town here. But and let me see if there's anything else here that I'm gonna say. Oh, 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 there was something over here that I wanted to do. It says, love, and it, now I went to five and I'm on verse 14. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by such, by each other. But it says that that one we always know, love your neighbor as yourself, okay? So that, so I say, live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the That's sinful it. nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nita, you take it away. If I find anything else, I'll come back later. <laughs> well, I want, uh, I want to read, want y'all to read these scriptures oh, okay. before I start. Okay. That's right, we're going to uh, do that. If they'll write them down so they can read them at home uh, after the ladies have read them. Job 14, 1. Man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Next time you have trouble, remember that was promised in uh, Job. Psalms 9, 9. Okay. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Right. A refuge in times of trouble. And then Psalms 27, 5 and 6. 27. Five, I'm going to repeat it each time so they be sure. 27, 5, and 6. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Okay, I think that's five, four, five and six. Okay, then hit my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy, oh, I will you. sing and make music to the Lord. Amen. The tabernacles is his dwelling place. Is his right. dwelling place. Right now, Psalm that means 77, you. 4. Okay. Let's see where mine is. 77, 4. You hold my eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. We've all been there. Yes, sir. And then Psalms 88, 3 and 4. 88, 3 and 4. Yes. 88, 3 and 4. Yes. Okay. For my soul is full of trouble, and my life draws near the grave, and I am counting among those who go down into the pit. I am like a man without strength. 3 and 4, that was what it was. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's what the message is today. Yes. Pits of life. Pits of life. The other uh, Sunday morning, I, I usually spend a lot of time in prayer and reading on Sunday morning. And uh, last week I received a, a message that one of my nieces had got burnt putting gas in her car. And she had about 50% of her body was burnt. Mm. And I'd been praying for her soul because she didn't know the Lord. And while I was thinking about her and praying about her, the Holy Ghost just spoke and said, that's one of the pits of life. I wanna, I'm want i going to read some of this because I want to get it all out. Amen. He said, that's some of the pits of life that all of you face sometime in life. Trouble is part of the flesh, this flesh life, as God has promised, just like Joe said in uh, Job. It's how anchored we are in God the Father. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. It's how anchored we are in God the Father, Jesus' Son and His Word that determines how we come out of the pit. Amen. If we have the divine anchor of God's Word and the spiritual ropes, this is what three of me. <laughs> I, People, uh, people that listen, uh, read my writings, thinks, you know, 
Because I, I, whenever something comes into my mind, I just put it down. And he said, the spiritual ropes. If you're going to get out of a pit, you got to have something to hold on to. Amen. The spiritual ropes of the Holy Ghost power in place, we have the help that we need to get out of the pit. Amen. I don't care what the pit is. And it's not always physical. There is lots of trouble that don't have anything to do with physical. Pits of life rocks our peace. You may be living in a peaceful world right now and somebody knocks on the door and tells you something uh, bad about your life. You don't have no peace no more. Disturbs our way of life. And in many cases, everything is put on hold until we win the victory over the pit. Yeah. That is what happened to my relatives. They had... Their life has been put on hold. Their jobs have been put on hold. Everything has just stopped until they know what, how this is going to come out. The sad part about it is that they never sought God. They don't know God. They know Him as a God, but they don't have a personal relationship with Him. And they turn me off all the time that I would talk to him about a personal relationship. <clears throat> of course, I can't talk to her now because can't nobody go, go in there where she's at. But I'm believing that while she's laying flat on her back, Amen. that everything God has had other people to tell her, it'll come back to her. Amen. I mean, she can't talk to nobody because they have her paralyzed where she can't move. But I believe that in her intellect, mm. I believe the Holy Ghost could move in there. And when she comes out of there, she's going to have a lot of questions to be asked. Be asked. The sad part, they didn't, they didn't have seek God for his anchor. They weren't in his word. They may have known what a lot of people know. God loves you. You know, scriptures they hear people talk about. Amen. They didn't have the spiritual ropes, the Holy Ghost power to hold on to and pull them out in time of need. And I can only pray, God be merciful. That's what I prayed That's this right. week. God be merciful to her. Don't take her until somebody, somebody has been able to talk to her and lead her to the Lord. The Spirit of God said, I want to one more time warn you. That's me. How important it is to seek God for all He has for you and for you. Amen. Amen. The divine anchor, God's Word. Don't take this for granted and don't put it on a shelf somewhere or put it on your coffee table and never pick it up and read it. Pick it up and read it. If you don't understand it, just close your eyes and say, Holy Ghost, I don't know what's going on, but I want you to explain this to me. And He will explain Amen. it to you yes, if you take your time to study the Word of God. Yes. He the sure divine will. anchor is God's Word, and the spiritual ropes is the Holy Ghost power that will be in place when the pits of life come your way. Hallelujah. If you have sought me, He Amen. said. He said, now seek me, and I'll put the Word in your life, I'll anchor you in the Word of God, and then I'll give you the spiritual ropes to help you get out of any pit that you're in. Amen. That's good. <laughs> I won't tell you. I've experienced some of this. I mean. But it seemed like this week the Lord just really drilled it into me. We've been warned in God's Word how frail flesh is yes. and that trouble dogs our days every day. That's right. Trouble is dogging you right now. It may not have got to you, but it's dogging you. Right. I do not listen to all of this. Just have faith, and you will want to fall into these pits of life. And if you're listening to that this morning, let me tell you, you better turn that off and get into the Word of God because you can have faith, but you're going to have pits too. Yes. You're going to have trouble too. Yes. Just because we have faith in God doesn't mean we're not going to have any trouble. That's and right. just because you have faith in God and you have trouble mm -hmm. don't mean God don't love you either. That's right. He loves you. That's and I'll right. show you that later on. I've known too many of God's people, and y'all have too, who have fell into the pits of life. They was God's own walking in obedience to God. 
I can think of one family that I know that was, I don't know of a godlier family that lived for God. They raised their children in the things of God. And it seemed like every time they turned around, they was facing trouble. But I look back on it now that I'm older in God. And you know, God said in his word, you trim the tree mm -hmm. so it brings forth no fruit. I mean. These people that, that, get in, that are God's people, they face pits too. And when they would come out of the pit of life, they told how God had spoke to them in that pit. Amen. In yes. an individual way. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you how much I love you. I'm telling you I'm faithful to you. Amen. I'm telling you I'm not never going to leave you. Amen. All of those things God was telling them while they were in the pit. They come out spiritually richer than when they fell in the pit. They had put the divine armor our uh, anchor of God's word and the spiritual ropes of the Holy Ghost power in place Amen. long before they ever got to that pit. Long before they ever, Amen. they wasn't expecting some of those pits they fell into, but they had the word of God alive in their spirit. They had listened to what God had to say. And when they got in the pit, they could draw on that. I always call that the spiritual bank. Yeah. When God gives you a promise, Take it to the spiritual bank, That's and right. it'll be there when you need to draw Amen. on it. Paul, who heard from the Spirit of God in many pits of life, he gives us courage to hold on until victory comes. When, it's not in the, when one is not in the pit of life, now hear this, it's easy to get in your own ways. I used to go to church with a lady that had a big family. And she's always praying about something. There was always, you know, when you got a big family, there's always problems. And one day she said to me, she said, you know, Sister Pike, I said, if God didn't keep me in trouble all the time, <laughs> I'd get in my own ways. Which it was good that she understood that because she said, I'm a person that when everything is going good, I forget to pray. I forget to read the word, but said whenever I'm in all of these problems and, and situations that my, and her husband was overseas, so she was having to take care of him, the problems at home. She said, if God didn't keep me in these, I couldn't stay close to him. Amen. She knew where her failing was. Right. When one falls into a pit of life and there's no divine anchor of God's word, are no spiritual ropes of the God's Holy Ghost to pull on, we then see how much we need God. Oh, I mean. You get into situations <clears throat> in life where it looks impossible. I can't see no way out of here. But if you know God, you see a way out, or you see a way to endure, or you see a way to steadfast, you see a way to be a, like a soldier. You see, you see a way to hang on mm -hmm. until God brings you victory. Mm -hmm. Now then, I'm, I'm going to detour a little bit here because we don't hear that kind of preaching. We hear preaching where everybody is, you're going to be on a mountaintop, you're going to have, everything is going to be fine. You know, maybe, maybe you'll have a little trouble, but you're not going to stay there. You're going to come out. And in about a year's time, you're not out. Or about 12 years, like I did, you're not out. You're still in there. But God was with us all the time. Amen. And that's the reason why we don't need to be hanging on to this. You victory, just speak it and it'll be done to you. I know you get some calls from them. The Holy Ghost let me know man's wisdom is no help. Only God's divine wisdom will lead the Holy Ghost to pull us out. Read it again. No, the Holy Ghost let me know man's wisdom is no help. Amen. He can tell you what you should be doing in this pit. And lots of times he's telling you that, uh, that you're there because you aren't obeying God. <clears throat> Uh, you know how the devil will yes. do everything. That's right. But you don't pay no mind to that. Only God's divine wisdom will lead the Holy Ghost to pull us out. It's easy 
listen to me. It's easy to be arrogant and embrace unbelief mm -hmm. as long as we're not in a pit of life. Amen. When everything is going fine, it's easy to con condemn that child of God that's in that pit over there. If you just prayed more, if you just had more faith, you would read the word more, it's easy to be arrogant and, and condemn other people. Isn't that what Job did? Isn't that what happened in Job? Huh? Isn't that what happened in Job? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Job, I told him, I, I didn't give this, but the Lord gave me a message one time that Job run into a bunch of loose lips. That's right. They was telling him everything that wasn't so. No. Job didn't get in his trial because of singing. Mm -hmm. He got in his trial because he was a righteous man. And God said, I'm going to try that righteous. Right. It's when things happen we have no control over. We need to have a humble spirit. Give complete faith to God yes. to come out of the spirit That's of life. That's right that in many cases could very well destroy us. And if with that kind of a spirit, you could help somebody else in a pit. I mean. I've seen people walking through trouble that I don't know whether I could ha handle it or not, but they didn't need somebody coming and telling them, you know, you, if you'd done this, if you'd done that, if you'd uh, read your word more, they needed somebody with a humble spirit that would sit down by the side of them and pray, God, give them everything they need Ooh. to go through this yes, pit. Yes. Whatever they need, give it to them, God. Right. Listen, we right. need some humble spirits yes. in the church today. Amen. I get so upset when I hear people that are say, calling and say, give a we want you to pray for somebody. But then they give me all of this business about how, you know, this wouldn't have happened if they had done that. Or, or they, they've got an answer for everything. They're, we don't have an answer for people's lives. Only God has that answer. Yes. And in a humble spirit, you wouldn't be running them down. The cry of every believer in Jesus is, Hold my hand. Keep my feet from slipping into unbelief. Amen. Because when you get in a deep pit, <clears throat> let me tell you, the devil works overtime. That's right. Telling you about all your faults. That's right. He'll tell you what's going to happen. I mean. You're not coming out of this. Uh-huh. To keep our soul in your spirit, mm. God, that even though you chose to walk us through a pit of life. Everything that happens to you is not because of you. God sometimes says it's time for you to go through a pit. Mm -hmm. You got a little bit too much pride in your life. That's right. You don't love me like you used That's to. That's right. That's right. You don't study your word like you used yes, to. Yes, sir. There's a many, many reasons why God would choose a pit for you to go through. Not every pit that he's, he is him is sometimes a such situation. But I believe God, he's got his eye on those oh, that's going through the pit. Is. And he knows how to trim them down. He knows how to work the fire on them. Faith is not gold until it goes through the fire. And Nita, not to interrupt your thought. No, 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 but no. But I was reading about the silver. When silver right. is in a refinery, when it's been uh, purged, when it's been, I don't even know how to say it, the dross has been right. taken out. It has to be, under, heat has to be under that. And the the, pot, the person that's working that that's machine it. keeps the eye, the, that's God the Father, the Holy Ghost, keeps his eye on that vat that's where it. that silver is. Yeah. And when he sees himself, <laughs> he takes his foot off of the lever and right. no longer does he need to press that any further. Right. Hallelujah. That's love persona. That's right. I tell you, you can hear testimony after testimony of God's people. Yes. People that knows what going through trouble really is about. And they'll tell you, if I hadn't have went there. That's right. Woo. You wouldn't have been. I can tell you things God had taught me 12 years mm -hmm. that I would have never, never, never learned. That's right. Had I not went there. Ooh. 
He said, uh, the Holy Ghost said, even though you chose, God, to walk us through a pit of life so we can feel your holy presence, I tell you, when you get in real trouble and you know God, that's the first place you head for, Amen. is to get close to Him and Hallelujah. feel His presence. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God wants to say to all believers, mm -hmm. not church members, but all believers, in the living, loving God, Hallelujah. His Son, Jesus Christ, that the time is coming. I want you to hear, hear, hear. The time is coming very soon, very soon, when the pits of life, none of us, none of us ever expected That's right. is going to face us. That's right. If you don't think this world is getting to the place where there's somebody's going to set off something that's going to cause the whole world to be in uh, a problem, then you're not you're not listening very well. You're not listening very well. Don't get so wrapped up in your life and what you own that you think nothing can rip it away from that's you. That's right. A friend, it can be ripped away from you overnight. Mm. Amen. I wish I, I tell you, I, sometimes the Lord Water gives bulls, me some oh. things that I'm scared to yes. give, Sister Macy. Yes. I'm scared to give them. But you give them anyway. But I, I know. I don't understand. I just do not understand these churches and these preachers is preaching all this prosperity and all this good stuff when hell is just about ready to rip things open. And God's going to allow it. Amen. He said he would allow it. But you better anchor to something besides your pride in yourself because you're going to need it in these last days. Amen. Then we'll know if we've got God's divine anchor Amen. and the spiritual ropes. Whenever you fall in these pits, it may be economical pits. It, it, it's all kinds of pits of life. Mm -hmm. Whatever pits of life comes our way, we can only handle it by faith in God. That personal faith Amen. that says, God, it's you and me. Mm -hmm. Joe, I love you. I love you. Yes. But when I'm in a pit, honey, it ain't you and me. That's right. It's God yes. and me. That's yes. right. It's God, it's you and me to overcome this part of oh, my life. Oh, I mean. That you can, you, people can stand with you and pray with you. They can encourage you. But in the end, it's you and God and nobody else. Amen. To think none of us will never face deep pits of life just because we're believers, just because I go to church so many days a week, just because I say I'm a child of God is very foolish. Mm -hmm. Most come when we don't even expect Amen. them. To believe life will hold nothing but good things for all believers is the thinking, hear me, is the thinking of those who do not know God's Word. I was reading in Psalms, I think it was 20, 26 or 25, this, this, I forgot where, no, I wrote it. It's Psalms 106, where David was telling, was reminding God, we, get, we got into the sins of our father. Yes, yes. And all of these things that he said, God, you, you brought us out of trouble. You fed us and took care of us. But that's a good chapter to read because that's what it, where exactly America is. That God raised this country up, mm -hmm. and he's blessed it over the years. But, friend, he's taken his hands off of America simply because America does not honor him. Simply because God, uh, Jesus is not honored. You know what I heard the other day? And I've already wrote a message of it. Reinventing Jesus Christ, the new gospel. Mm. They're saying you don't need the cross anymore. Yeah. You don't. You know who wrote that message? You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to be uh, hanging on to the cross. 
Jesus was not the real sacrifice. He's just a symbol. My God. Now, this is going on. A radio station started January the 1st by a celebrity that hired this person to teach this lesson. Mm -hmm. It'll be on every day for an hour for the whole year. You think God's going to allow that to go on? When he gave everything he had at the cross, That's right. and he loved, uh, he loves humanity. Oh no, Jesus is not a symbol, my friend. He's the Savior He's of the, the world. Reality. And if America don't turn back to the Savior of the world, That's we're right. going to hear exactly what happened in Psalms 106. You read it. Yes. And that's not the only place. There's other places. Judgment is coming to America. I don't care what you say. You may turn this station off and never listen to us again, but it's coming. Amen. And that's a pit Amen. we're all going to fall into. But God's going to take care of those that belong to him. He's already said, I've got a, a shield over my people that I'm going to take care of them. Amen. But those that don't know God is the ones that's going to struggle Amen. in the pit. Amen. Mm. I'm telling you. To believe and hold I on, nothing will happen is foolishness. God, go to the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 and read how those old saints of God they believed in God. Jesus hadn't come, but they believed in God. They kept their eye on the promise that had been given to them. And many of them walked in deep pits yes, of yes. life, Ooh. but it didn't, didn't take away their faith. No, sir. I asked the Holy Ghost to drill this message deep in my spirit. Oh. And he has, friend. I've went back and reread it and reread it and reread it. Right. That if a knock comes on my door with news I didn't expect, the divine anchor of God's Word and the spiritual ropes of the Holy Ghost oh. would be firmly in place. Amen. Amen. I ask God, dread, don't let me forget about it. Don't let me take this as just a message to give to somebody, but you drill it into my spirit. Yes, that's and right. And then I had a testimony sent me, and some of you, Joe knows this little lady, I don't. But this is a testimony she sent after she read this word. She's not on my mailing list, she's on somebody else's. But when I send these out on the mailing list, a lot of them send it to whoever's on their mailing list. Yes. She said, it is in one of these pits <clears throat> that Terry, my husband, and I found ourselves walking our promise. Since Terry's injuries in Iraq, we have seen God open doors oh, yes. and reveal to us what he wants from us that we would have never known nor been able to do had we not gone through such a tragedy. What often seems the worst to others Hallelujah. <laughs> can be the place of blessings Ooh, that's what counts. when God's in it. It has not been easy these four years, but it certainly has been very purposely. And this is where I had a message coming. You never know what treasures can be found in a pit. Amen, amen. I don't know this little lady, but honey, if you're watching, you found victory in your pit. Amen. You're not out of it, but you found victory in your pit. Hallelujah. I tell you, I, I just, I feel like there's people yes. that are walking through things. Yes, sir. And if you don't know God, did you know that pit maybe to get you to know him? Yes. Just like yes. it is my niece that's laying flat of her back in Lubbock, <clears throat> paralyzed, burnt over 50% of her body. She didn't know God, and she wasn't interested in knowing a whole lot about him. She knew God. You know, God exists. Everybody knows God. But there was no personal experience. But I believe this pit's going to gonna open her eyes. And we may say, what a terrible tragedy. No, no. it's not a terrible tragedy. 
if she finds Jesus Ooh, Christ, my God, she's life. found eternal life. Woo. But if she don't find Jesus Christ, there's eternity in hell. That's right. One way or the other. That's right. And the victory is when you find Jesus, all the troubles that you're going through are over. There's no more tears in heaven. There's no more trouble in heaven. So if you're in a pit this morning and you feel like it's just swallowing you up and you don't know God, mm -hmm. let me ask you, just fall down wherever you're at or raise your hand mm -hmm. or whatever and say, God, I'm in this pit. I don't know why I'm here, but I need your help. Amen. I don't even know how to ask you for help. And in fact, I don't know very much about you. But God, if you just let me know a little bit about you, I believe maybe you exist. Them three women up there talk like you exist. If you just open up and talk to him like that, honey, he'll come in and minister to your Amen. every need. Amen. Just open your spirit up to him. Amen. You don't have to know the word of God. You don't have to know a lot of these things that we have studied for years and still don't know. That's right. <clears throat> I'm going to pray a simple prayer Amen. for you. God, I ask you now, to that, those that are going through pits that don't know you, that trouble is swallowing them up, God, would you help them just to utter this word, Jesus, I don't know nothing about you, but I sure would like to know, would you come into my life? And I believe God will minister to you. And then he'll begin to help you. Yes. You may know a good Christian somewhere or know a minister somewhere that you have confidence in that will help you to lead you to the fullness of God. If you don't, would you call this station? Yes. There's prayer warriors here that will help you find Jesus. Yes. And if you need further in that, they'll ask me and Joe to, get, to be able to pray with you. But I tell you, we've got, and you, you saints of God that are going through a pit, you know how to get to God. Fall on your face and get to God, and he'll minister to you. I know we're better out of time. All right, join us again next week. Nita, thank you. We hope you've been blessed.